Gracie Jiu Jitsu rocks. Welcome to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Rocks podcast, a podcast dedicated to Gracie Jiu Jitsu and all things Gracie, including self defense, competition, anti bullying, women's self defense and empowerment nutrition, and most especially, the people involved in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. This podcast is for the average Joe. It's for anyone who practices, trains, teaches, or just loves to talk about or hear about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. We'll explore the lives of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, how they got involved in the art, and what effect it's had on their lives. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to episode 123 of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Rocks podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marty Josie, and thanks for listening. So this is our first episode of the new year, so welcome to the new year. Glad you're with us. We're going to have a great discussion today, and this episode will be discussing how to start your year off very strong and how to not fizzle out somewhere in the, the year, but how to stay consistent throughout the year. We'll cover things like goals versus resolutions, seeing the value of goals and goals for different parts of your life, as well as a lot of other parts to this puzzle. I'm very fortunate to have three distinguished professors and black belts with me for this discussion today. They were on the show last year discussing how to stay on the mat long term. And these professors are Keith Owen, Greg Nelson, and Mark Kukro. Professor Keith Owen also known as the Rhino, lives in Boise, Idaho, and he's a third-degree black belt under Professor Pedro Sauer. He holds black belts in two other martial arts styles. He's a fourth degree in Thai Kung Fu and a black sash in Wu Wei Kung Fu under Bruce Lee student Joseph Cowles. He's worked in law enforcement as a sheriff's deputy and a handgun and shotgun instructor for Front Sight Firearms Institute in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's a highly respected and sought-after seminar instructor and is the leader and founder of Team Rhino. Coach Greg Nelson is a fourth degree Pedro Sauer black belt and Master Sauer's first black belt. He is one of the world's best and most successful MMA coaches, including coach to three UFC champions, including Sean Shirk, Brock Lesnar, and Dave Manet. He's a sixth degree Muay Thai black belt, modern army combatives instructor, full instructor in Inosanto Kali and Junfan JKD concepts, and an advanced level student in Shuto. He owns and operates the Academy in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Professor Mark Kukro is also a black belt under Master Pedro Sauer and is the head instructor of Integrated Martial Arts Academy in Harrisburg, North Carolina. He's an accomplished martial artist and has been training in martial arts for over 25 years. He's known for his technical, efficient, and practical approach to teaching. He has trained in several other styles of grappling that have influenced his jiu-jitsu, which include judo, sambo, catch wrestling, and shuto. Mark is also a highly successful public speaker with frequent speaking engagements throughout the U.S. So again, I'm very honored to have a discussion with these gentlemen. So we're going to jump right into it after the discussion. Make sure you stick around for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. And now, without further ado, let's talk to the professors. Okay, I'm here with Professor Mark Kukro, Professor Keith Owen, and Professor Greg Nelson again. And uh, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. The band is back together. <laughs> the yeah. band is back together. And we had such a great time last time. I definitely wanted to uh, to do it again. Last time we discussed staying on the mat long term and really, really enjoyed that discussion. So this time we'll uh, switch gears and talk a little bit about uh, starting the year off strong, what that process looks like for you guys or what you do to, to start it off. And, and then 
how do we stay committed throughout the year and not just kind of lose ground and fizzle out? So I don't know about you guys, but this last year was definitely the fastest year yet for me. They say as you get older, they keep getting faster or, or seem shorter, and that has definitely been the case for me. I personally think they need to slow down. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. But at the same time, rock on, baby. No matter where it goes, I'm on the trip. <laughs> You're on the trip for wherever it goes. Huh? Yep. All right, all right. So to, to kick things off, uh, how do you guys start your year? Do you use New Year's resolutions or reestablish your goals or something else to uh, to start your year off? Personally, myself, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. I just do a continuing, I just continue on, right, for me. You know, obviously, I'm constantly readdressing my goals and where I want to go and how I'm doing it, but it's kind of somewhat on automatic pilot right now i mean i'm this is what i do and this is what i have done for since i can remember so it's just readjusting and recalibrating certain goals and that's personal goals you know my business goals training goals you know health goals so i just look at different things what's going well what's going you know what do i need to work on and what am i still working on that needs to be uh just probably fine-tuned a little bit so, yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it, too, is, you know, the word resolution, I think, kind of has a connotation to it. And a lot of people, when you say I make a resolution, typically they expect most people not to follow through with them. If you ask 20 people, what do you think about New Year's resolutions? I think the majority be like, well, maybe one or two of us will finish them. Um, so I like the idea of having the goals and identifying the goals and continuing that. And I think a lot of it stems from you know, do you know your own tendencies physically, mentally, emotionally? Do you have enough awareness of self to think, okay, I know that when I get stressed out or it, the fun wears off, my discipline needs to kick in more. And, you know, they say there's three basic rules to get improving in anything. Show up, show up when you don't feel like it and show up when you really don't feel like it. And you're, you're always going to feel better. Yeah. But I think we have to have a lot of like intellectual kind of emotional character integrity and honesty with ourselves and know like what makes us tick and what makes us quit and um and i like the goals and you know most businesses or most coaches will use something called smart goals and if you're listening to this and you've heard it before and you're nodding it, it does help um but i think most people also don't really know how to set goals they just have like hopes that they tell and communicate to their social circles and they don't really know okay, this is how you design a goal and it's got to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time oriented. And, um, exactly the, the more concise and clear you can be with what you want to improve or learn to do, the easier it is to do it. But like, for example, I want to get in better shape or I want I've actually heard people say this and it makes me laugh is I want to get in shape before I do jujitsu. I was like, well, how, how about you just show up and we'll take care yeah. of the rest, you know? So, uh, I think the number one goal really in anything is to show up no matter what and don't stop. And uh, then we can drill into the real specifics of it. But I think, you know, if we sit down with not just ourselves, with other people too, like something that we have found to be effective is in November, we start talking about the holiday season. And then in December, we start talking about what the holiday season is that everybody's going through. We know you're going to be tempted to eat good food, to stay off the mats, you know, to find reasons not to come. But your friends and family have kind of a choice, too. Do you think they would rather have you go out for an hour and a half and come back in a better mood and be, like, full of energy? Or would you rather have them – do you think they would choose for you to be there and not be in a good mood because you know you need to get physical exercise and train? And most people that support you are probably going to say, you know what, you probably need an hour. Go out and train and come back. So – uh I think knowing yourself is really important too, but a lot of people around you don't understand what it's like to be really good at something. I mean, most people are like pretty good at things and then you have a smaller group that are really good and an even smaller group that are remarkable and exceptional. And you have to trade in a lot of your social life in order to do that. And if you're willing to do it, great. But um, the other thing is you gotta be honest. like with your word if you say i lead by example and you raise children and you say i want you to follow my example as a parent 
as a mom, as a dad, whatever, and I, sh and I continuously show you that I start something and quit when it gets hard, that's the behavior that I'm establishing. So I think it's important to start having those conversations. But as a coach, we have to do that in a very positive and encouraging way. And at the same time, hold each other accountable. And coaches need coaches too. So yeah, that's just my perspective. You know, last year, or 2019, I should say, was, I think, one of the best years I've ever had. I mean, things uh, things went fantastic. You know, I had some trials and tribulations, but I overcame them. Uh, and the reason that is, is because I didn't make any resolutions at the beginning of the year. Resolutions suck. It is goals that are the key to your success. And I just followed my goals all through the year. And I got to tell you, some of them were hard. <laughs> and I, I just worked on them and worked on them. And you know, the, the secret is not resolutions and it's not even really goals, but you got to have goals cause you got to know where you're going. But once you have the goals, you need to develop the habits every single day of following through and getting what you want, uh, in life. All right. Following those goals, goals without like any action is just is kind of like a resolution, I suppose. I mean, you don't take any action on it. You're not going to get anything. So but you got to be able you, you got to be able to follow through and make those into habits, man. If you want to be good at jujitsu, man, you got to make it a habit to go to class. You got to make it a habit to watch, I guess, watch videos, have private lessons, uh, bring in people. Uh, you want you want to be good at your business. You, you know, you got to get up every morning and start hustling, just like Mark said. And if you're not hustling, you're not rocking it. Uh, you, you're going to come up short. And the whole goal of what we're trying to do, man, why we're making goals and resolutions is to be happy. You, you want to find that happiness. And I'm telling you, when you succeed, I, I, I for personally, nothing makes me more happy than succeeding. But you got to you got to follow through uh, and start making good habits and if and get rid of the old ones. And you guys know what I'm talking about, about those habits. You know, the taking the three hour nap every day, you know, not you know, going to work, uh, not doing the, not putting in the time, not going to class. Those things will, those things will catch up to you and then you'll be unhappy and you can't figure out why. That's true. So you got to have the follow through. But even before we get to that, I like what, um, I agree with what you guys said. I'm not a resolution guy. I think that's, um, they're almost guaranteed to fail most of the time, but goals, goals are where it's at. And, and Mark, thanks for sharing about the smart goals because, a lot of us have weak, lofty goals. You know, I'd, I'd like to do this, I'd, but they're not clearly defined. And when they're not clearly defined, you're not giving your brain real direction, specific direction on where you want it to take you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, Greg, you mentioned different kinds of goals for different areas of your life. And I think that's important instead of having maybe just, you know, general goals, but uh, specific goals for your personal life, specific goals for, you know, family um, and growing and developing in that area. Uh, definitely training or if you're running a school, what are your goals on that line? So guys, talk a little bit more about, about those kind of areas and, and why it's important to develop in all those areas. Yeah, for for me, a, a big part of it, and I start my day with this, and this is how I kind of get things going. But for me, and, and uh, this was already alluded to by Keith, being healthy and happy and having energy, huge. Because if you're not healthy and you have no energy, you ain't getting nothing done. So, so true. You know, one of my primary goals is to increase my health and happiness and energy through my diet, through my sleep, through uh, studying different ways and what's working for me as far as my diet's concerned, drinking more water. And for me, a big, a big thing, which I don't need for probably majority of my life, I was like the enemy of sleep. Now I'm like realizing, man, I've been poking a sharp stick in my eye for most of my life <laughs> now i'm sleeping more and i'm getting more done because my I, my brain can focus longer i can be more productive and so probably the last four or five years i really have been focusing a lot of my uh, time and energy on how to have more energy how am i going to be healthier what am i going to do to be more productive and a big part of that is just having that ability to keep going so that is a huge one. So for me, that's kind of my healthy habit. And what goals am I going to set there? S getting to sleep when I when I say I'm going to get to sleep and trying to get that amount of hours. The same discipline that I have to be on the mat, I have to I have to probably have more to do stuff like sleep because 
I want to do things all the time. So I have to really force myself to make that. So I made it a habit. I do my morning routines. I get up. I have my routine that I do every single day. I drink a lot more water. Um, I haven't drinking really soda for years and years, but um, I drink a lot of water. And then I have a specific training regimen that I do. Uh, not just grappling, but I do a lot of Carenza for my shoulders and my elbows and my joints. And, and I do stuff for mobility. And so that's the healthy goals that I, that I try to set. And I write them down. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do them. And then I have my own personal uh, my personal goals, which I'm doing right now, which is I want to read a specific amount every day. And I have to fit that in just like anything else. And those are some of the things that I can easily say, well, I can do that later because I want to do this more. But what's that creating? A habit to do that. So I got to say, nope. I'm going to write this down. This is on my calendar for today mm -hmm. at this time. So I'm doing it, period. Have, and I just have that same discipline that I had when I was an athlete. And uh, so that's part of it. And I'm doing uh, different study courses to uh, increase my ability to, you know, do more things on the computer and all this other stuff that I probably put out for a long time because I was always training, training, training. And so now I'm shifting a little bit and, finding some more personal goals there. And then of course my, my goals at the Academy, you know, having our weekly meetings, what's going on with our other schools. How's our student count doing? Are we, you know, for me, I, I have to have those little, we have a whole teaching course. So I'm constantly, you know, okay, this week I'm really going to focus on this part on myself about teaching being a three times rule, you know, using people's names, appropriate touch, uh, doing all these, I have to remind myself to do that stuff all the time because I, I can be just teaching the technique and having a blast. So I have to, re, you know, so I have to remember, oh yeah, there's people here that don't do this for their life. All right. And I have to motivate them along the way. So I have to remind myself to do that. So I write that down today. I'm going to literally do this in my classes. So those are the micro goals. Keith, you want to go or you want me to go? Yeah, no, I'll jump in. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> me personally, I, I believe that in, if you're going to have a goal, if you're whatever you want to do in life, the goal has to uh, align with your life. It's got to be able to make you happy. If you're not going out and doing goals that make you happy, you're, you might as well forget it. You're just going to be unhappy and you're going to decide to quit. Once you get those goals, though, it, you need to write them down. Goals that aren't written down are easily forgotten. That's what we do at the beginning of the year. I make these, I guess, resolutions. Mm -hmm. uh, you ain't writing them down. You're just going, I wish, I wish, I wish. And that's kind of crappy that you have to start the year out wishing again because you screwed up the year before and you're just trying it again. It, if you're going to have goals, you got to get serious about them. And the way you get serious about them is to write them down. Even if you never yeah. look at them again, they will be in your mind. And just the act of writing them down will be a good way – to go about starting your new year. Well, yeah. And you know, like if you look at everything that we're saying, it's, you got to understand, you have to understand what you want to do, identify, be clear, be concise, align the goals with your lifestyle. If you don't like doing something, I don't care how much energy you put into it. You're not just all of a sudden going to be happy doing it. Um, and you know, if you have a family too, I mean, relationships happen, things change, move, jobs change. I remember having twins. And I took both of them in the carrier. I sat them on the side of the mat and I went and did a class. If one of them cried, I ran over there and I ran back on the mat. Um, there's a lot of reasons. There's never a shortage. There's an abundance of reasons not to do something. But if you really want to do it, there's just no excuse not to do it. Um, and you have to kind of figure out what you're willing to exchange for that. And, you know, the other thing I want to ask the listener personally, you, this is me talking to you, is do you make everyone in your life around you flourish? including you or do you make everyone in your life flourish except for you when you go home when you go and you start dealing with your friends and your family and your loved ones do they get the best of what you have or the rest of what you have and i think a lot of what greg said too is like you have to get rest you have to get sleep don't wait for a crisis to go make a change that you know you should have made in the first place and i think very often human beings are crisis oriented and we wait for something to happen and 
I don't know a single person that hasn't had adversity or challenges and obstacles in their life in some form or fashion. But I think what we forget to do often is condition ourselves to expect them. Like, I know something's going to go wrong. I don't know what it is. If I knew, I would prevent it from happening. But what I can tell you is over the years, as I get older, it's easier for me to handle things because I've been through so much. And including being on the mat in jiu-jitsu, getting, and, you know, starting off as a beginner in the very end of the class, tying the belt, moving up in the ranks, getting smashed, getting the belt. And then every other one with the same belt smashes you, and then you move up the ranks. And that's just part of life. But um, I think we have to stop. And if you're listening to this and you've been interested in jujitsu or setting goals, you need to stop with the excuses and really have an honest, deep down conversation to the core of who you are as a human being and say, look, I got to stop the internal BS and just do something and just show up even when you don't want to. Um, because anyone that's ever good at anything has been through a lot of challenges and you overcoming challenges is a learned skill. No one just is born with this. I mean, you have a level of it, but you have to learn how to overcome these things. And uh, a lot of it comes down to you too, how you perceive the people around you. If you help everyone around you, by default, the law of reciprocity, they're going to help you. If you bring all your teammates up, you can't help but improve. And, um, and last thing before I, I turn it over to one of you guys is, we have to stop making goals with these huge increments of if increase or improvement in a short period of time. I mean, what happens is very often is you go, oh man, this is amazing. Then the newness wears off and you go, I feel like I'm not very good. Well, you're not supposed to. Or could you say I'm getting better and I'm, I'm figuring out what I need to work on. And so the mental approach to how you view your own uh, prog progress and progression is really important man, I'm not really good at this yet. You know what? I'm working on it and I'm getting better. They're two totally different perceptions. And um, you have to condition your mind to look for the better things because you're at least doing something, which is more than people that are naysayers and negative and non-achievers do. You're showing up and that's 90% of the path to achievement. So um, no excuses, get there, do something, find a way, and then um, make sure you find someone to call you out if you're not doing it. And that would be, all of us do that. If I don't meet these goals, I need you to call me out on it. And you, you may not, it may not be comfortable. Sometimes it's like medicine, it tastes bad, but man, it'll, it'll help heal and, uh, and you'll improve from it. So that's my perspective on that. Yeah, let me just jump in for a second. There were a lot of good stuff there. I think, well, one thing that really stands out uh, about uh, what you guys were talking about is kind of the self-care that, you know, especially coming toward off the end of a year where maybe a lot of us uh, run run ourselves down a little bit with the holidays and that kind of thing. I mean, obviously, we try to stay very balanced, but in general, I think society and probably us, too, at times, um, you know, overextend or, or get a little mm -hmm. rocky through the uh, end of the year. So you might not start the year as energetic as you would like. So I love what you're saying about really making sure you are 100% going forward because if you don't have it to give others or to give to your goals, it's, it's, it's not going to go very far. You know, the old adage of when you're in an airplane and the instructions of when the oxygen mask pops down that you do yours first before worrying about um, your child. I mean, that, that applies. We got to take care of ourselves or we won't have anything for, for others. So the other thing is having an, a, a really powerful why behind your goals. You can have the specifics. You need to know the end result. You need to know kind of incremental steps so you can plan the whole, how do you, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, we got to break it down to manageable chunks, but if we don't have a strong, compelling why we're doing it, then that affects our discipline. When on those days that it's not easy and we're really struggling, having that in compelling why and vivid and strong why I think really pulls us through. Yeah, I think it's, it's huge. You got to know why you're doing something. I mean, I, you know, I always say that right now, probably one of the most important people in the world that I'm studying is myself. Trying to figure out what is going to make me the most beneficial to others around me. And again, that's why I'm so focused on that health and energy and doing what I need to do so that I can be fully energized when I go into my classroom. 
so I can be totally pumped up so I can see what they're doing. And ultimately, like I always uh, say to my instructors and to the people at meeting, I said, are you an example of the benefits of the martial art? Mm. Nice. Right? <laughs> because you're, you know, just aping your way through class and just like, oh, they're seeing that going, well, why am I doing this? That dude can hardly get through class. All right. So, you know, you got to be that the, the example of why people want to do this. You're the you're the leader of the pack. So that's a big thing for me is how can I take somebody that is doing this stuff for the very first time who's never done the martial arts and lead them into this journey so that they become physically tougher, mentally tougher, emotionally tougher. All right. Being able to deal with the adversity that we talk about that everybody has to deal with. But then it becomes natural for them. It's like, oh, yeah, it's just like flat. I can make it through class. I can make it through this. And so, you know, be that example that you want your students to to become. When I was um, go, going up through the martial arts and I own a martial arts school, uh, in the martial arts business, they would always say when <clears throat> that you need to grow into the level that you want to accomplish. You need to be able to grow. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? I have to grow. I'm already mature. I mean, I got this. And over the years, I really got to see what that meant. You have to grow into the person that is capable of handling these goals. And I know that sounds weird because you're like, hey, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man or woman. I can handle this. The thought process that you need to accomplish things, uh, you have to develop yourself into that person. And I think that's what Greg is saying. You have, I mean, if if you're not developed into that person, how can you handle that? Let, let me just use this as an example, and then th I'm not trying to get political here, but running for president. I mean, you have to be a certain kind of person, to, and not to handle the political side, let's just not talk about that, but the day-to-day -day work of the, what the president does, man, this guy gets up early in the morning, I don't care if it's Obama, Trump, Clinton, whatever, gets up early in the morning and starts their day off and continues and goes, 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 all single day, because that's what is expected of him. A regular person who who has never been into that and suddenly gets thrust into a, like a presidential kind of situation could never handle that. He'd be like, I need to take a break. I can't handle this. And and so you have to be a person. You have to be the kind of person that can be able to handle the change that you want to affect in your life. Because if you don't, uh, <clears throat> the growth isn't going to happen. And uh, I mean, if you're not prepared to go to class and you're, you're, you don't feel like, oh, I can handle it and I don't think I'm the, I can handle going to class, you're not going to go to class. And that's just as simple as that. So so the, as we're talking, you know, work on yourself as a person. Greg hit it right on the head. You need to work on yourself as a human being uh, in your personal life and handling your spouse, your friends. I mean, you and make yourself into that person. You can't just set a goal and then go out and try to achieve it without working on you as a person. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's it's interesting because we, we share our perspectives and right here on the podcast, we're learning from each other, too. It's but you have to 100 percent set the example. Like, how can you tell someone that they should be committed and dedicated if you're not? How could you tell someone they should eat healthy and, and, and you're not eating healthy or be in shape and you're not in shape? And, you know, I look at my kids and I think and this is kind of my why is me and my family, too. It's like, how could I tell you to do something that I'm not even doing? Right. Like, how could I tell you to be in shape, work out, and train and eat healthy if I'm not? I don't even understand that. And what I'm teaching you even more so, because especially if you have kids and I don't know about you, but I do. And uh, they watch what I do, not just what I tell them. And their perception of me to what as to what they tell their friends is different than what I tell them I am as a dad. That makes sense. So um, if I'm like, hey, listen, I got to show up even when I don't want to. And Master Sauer has a saying, he said, what's difficult today will always be easier tomorrow and you do rise into the level of your leadership and influence and in the beginning it was really hard to run an academy it was difficult to get these routines in my life and once the routines are set and you learn to purge the unnecessary distractions you become more calm just like in jiu-jitsu calm poised more productive you move with purpose not so much with reckless urgency and i think that's really an important thing to do, um, but you have to, and this is the thing, and you, there's so much research, in fact, basically all I've ever seen, you have to have a good you in order to bring the good out in other people around you. And exactly. if you don't serve yourself, how can you contribute to your circle? How can you say, okay, I feel terrible, I wanna raise everyone up around me. And uh, that there's some level of selfishness to that, 
but your family and your friends and your kids and whoever knows you wants the best of you. And even if they do care, they really do want the best for you. But um, you have, we, we've got to stop with, with this idea that it's okay to take a break and to quit. Um, and, you know, that's the difference because medio mediocrity is accepted by the masses, by most people with excuses. And excellence is a pursuit, right? Being the best is temporary. And it's like, well, how do I bring out the best in me while pursuing the process of excellence? And I may be the best, but at some point, age is going to be a factor. Other things in life are going to be a factor. But that doesn't mean I slow down the process of being the person that tries to improve every single day. And, uh, you know, if you're listening to this today, just go do something. And, you know, of course, us as martial arts coaches, we know the benefits of martial arts. And I have to be in shape to be in class. If I can't even make it through warm-ups, how am I a good example to my students? You know, so I think we take all these things into consideration. And as you listen to this, you'll take different notes. But write down, write down the things that stick out in your mind and go take action on them. Because if you, you can give someone ideas, you can give them concepts and techniques. What we can't give you as a human being is your execution of those things. And you need to be responsible for that. So... And we'll help you get there, but you, only you can execute your activities. Wise words. What do you do if someone doesn't fully buy into that yet? They don't see the the need or the value of goals. Well, maybe one of your students, perhaps it's a, a somewhat new student to jujitsu, and and um, or they'll they'll give you a really vague, you know, I want to get better, or this yeah. is someone I want to eventually be a black belt, whatever it may be. But when you give it just a few morsels, they're not really taking the bait very well or seeing the value. Where do you go with that to help them understand? Okay. Well, for me, I, you know, usually I'm trying to, I'll find an example in the school that's very similar to them. You know, I could say, Hey, this is what I did. And they're like, yeah, well, that's you. But now I'll take another new student who had a similar situation or has a similar job or a similar life schedule. And, and then equate their situation to that person and even bring those two together because, hey, you want someone to stay in your school? Create the community in your school where they'll help each other. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a huge thing. So if they all of a sudden see another person in their school that's going through the same thing or has gone through the same thing, that's going to just allow them to you know, probably take a little bit more of a realistic look at it as opposed to looking at the top of the food chain and going, Oh my God, how am I going to get there? Well, don't worry about how you're going to get there. How about do what this guy did? So I always, I introduce somebody to somebody who's going through the same thing or has gone through the same thing. And they end up, uh, and that seems to, again, develop a little bit more of that community and a little bit more of a team mentality. And then they uh, feel part of the group then and part of the process. Um, boy, this one's tough for me. Uh, how do I get people like you just can't motivate unmotivated people that that's what I see in life. And if, if you're not ready to change your life, I don't think there's anything that I can personally say or do that's going to get you on the right path. This is such a personal thing. Um, and then I, you know, my attitude, I, I always tell my boys, I go, Hey, you know, you, you go, you can do anything you want in life. All you have to do is work hard enough and go out and do it. But if, and uh, serious, I told him, but if you don't want to, that is okay too, because we always need people to work at McDonald's and say, would you like to supersize that? <laughs> yeah, and I'd have my kids repeat after me. I go, repeat after me, would you like to supersize it? Would you like that into a large, you know, and, and if you don't <laughs> want to do anything with your life, it's okay. And so I, I don't look at myself, me, Keith Owen, I, I, I don't know. I'm not talking about you guys, but me, I am not a motivational speaking kind of guy in the sense that I'm trying to motivate you to be better. Like you guys said, we just have to set the example and hopefully people will come on board with that. And if you are, I can work and help you with that. If you're not motivated, man, I just, I don't personally just know how to do that because people, uh, you know, the why isn't there for some people, you know, and, and I always, I always say to people, I go, you know, this, this problem that you have, if I told you that in one month you were going to be executed at dawn, if you didn't change your ways right now with this, what would happen? He goes, oh, I wouldn't be executed. I would change my ways. Well, there's the why, because you were going to get executed. So you made this change, uh, but you're not going to get executed. You're going to live a life and you're going to go through life 
not achieving anything if that's what you desire. And there are a lot of people that don't achieve anything. And I guess maybe we need people like that in life so that they can serve the people who are achieving. But if you want to get on board the achievement train, you got to set goals, first of all, and write them down and then then start working on them every single day. And if you're not willing to do that, this this whole talk right now, I think, is a is a, just a complete waste because you're not going to make yourself happy the way you want to by having the things you want. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting when when people come to the academy, the universe mind, whoever is, I'll just speak about mine because it's easy for me and it's, it happens on a, a fairly common basis. People come in and they're interested, but I see, you know, there's several reasons why people want to start martial arts, fitness, self-defense, whatever it is. Um, but I, I think it also most people really don't understand and realize the potential that's in them. And uh, I feel like we have some sense of obligation to at least try to help. Now, if you're not motivated and you don't want to be here, we'll go somewhere else. But right. if you're welcome to come in, you're willing to come in. It's kind of a really uneasy uh, thing to do sometimes. It's like you walk into a place of people punching and kicking each other, throwing each other, and you're like, what the heck is this? So I can see that part. Um, but building that sense of community, I think, is very important. Like nobody should wait more than a few seconds to have someone say hello to them. And then having someone like you said, Greg, hey, this person went through something similar. I didn't even have to tie my belt. I was a black belt. It took me a month. I'm a black belt now. It took me a month to tie my belt. And I expect it to take you about the same thing, too. You're going to go through struggles just like everybody else. But when you have someone that has a mentor or a buddy or some sense of community, they typically feel like they're a little more obligated. And they sometimes don't want to let someone down, so they go to class. Then once the routine is established, it's a lot easier. But it takes time to assimilate into the mindset of jujitsu and martial and Muay Thai and kickboxing and JKD and Kali and all those arts that we all do and love. But um, most people don't know how to light their own fire inside. Mm -hmm. It's never been explained to them that as you as a human being listening to this right now have as much right and ability, capability and potential as any other human that's willing to put in the work. And I would rather have someone that lacks talent that shows up that's more dedicated because you can cultivate that because they want it more. And so um, I think complacency is easy. It really is. All you do is nothing. And um, and if you're, if you're content, that's fine. But accomplishment is tough. And that's why you need coaches. And that's why you need people nudging you and encouraging you. But you have to learn to light your own fire and kind of initiate your own drive. And then when your drive is on autopilot, it's a lot easier. In, to accomplish things, but the level of what's normal for you to go through on a day-to-day -day basis, like you said, Keith, the guy that shows up, that is slow. That's what people don't realize. It creeps up at a small percentage every day, and then you'll see someone you haven't seen in a few years, and like, you know what? You're just a different person, man. You're chill. You're calm. You're way more confident. I don't know what it is about you, and that's because your your level of confidence comes out non-verbally, and you're just so much more poised in the pocket of life. Uh, so that's my perspective on what I would tell a new student is we've all been there, man. And our job is to bring you where you want to be. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, too, I have a, a secondary role. I'm also a high school wrestling coach. Uh. <laughs> and so that's an entirely different animal, right? Well, it's kind of wrestler, so I can slap them around a little bit. So that's cool. <laughs> but I really I there's I look at the kids in there even as two. There's two entirely different groups there's the group that actually wants to work to become really good mm -hmm. and there's the group that just kind of hangs on and this is a mm -hmm. wants to be known to be on the wrestling team right. right yeah and i you know and i understand that so i see the see those kids and i i look at them a little bit differently and i try to encourage them to be on there and the biggest reason why i'm doing that is so that they'll stay on the team so that the kids that want to be really good have more kids to do wrestling on yeah <laughs> right and so i'm like hey we all got a role and i and even the the person who's maybe the third string down you got a role to make each to the guys that are that are making this team better i mean you're part of that you're part of that machine and so even though you don't feel like you are you really are you add something that no one else can bring back and bring to this this team Right. Even if it's just to be there, 
you know, to to mo- to to help inspire another guy, or to either to have them take you down, or to be there. And and I always tell them the story, and this is my story. When I first started wrestling, I won one match and lost all the rest because I wanted to headlock and lateral drop everybody. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So I knew a, I knew a lot of light configurations in multiple gyms across the area, but I eventually the, the I said the following year I decided, man I don't want to do that anymore, and so that year the next year I I won I won all my matches except for two so I just almost inversed it, and then it was just like a slow process of just developing, and so I can look at them and say hey I was that I was just like you man I was always on my back I was getting pinned I was getting smashed. And now, you know, I, it was a decision that I made personally. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> it was a decision. Yes, it was a decision that I didn't want to do that anymore. So I decided yes. that I was going to do what I had to do to win more, to be a better student, to be that person I need. And it changed across the board with my grades and everything. I mean, everything yes. changed. So I tell them that that one change that I decided to do in wrestling ended up changing so many areas of my life that to, even to this day, I remember that it was a decision and a choice. And so sometimes it, it comes down to that, just telling them, hey, hey do you want to be better? You have to make a decision. Where, is it, where, is, where are you going to decide to be better in your life? Just that one little area, which will help other areas in your life. Mm-hmm. So, 100%. Along with that decision, which I appreciate you bringing that up, because I guess that's what I was trying to say, is that you have to make a decision that you want to be better in your life, that you want to have success, that you want to do what you want to do. If you just get up every morning and don't have any goals, don't make a decision, you are going to let life happen to you instead of making life happen for you. And one of the things I'm always saying, and I'm sitting here thinking about what I do. I am constantly in my mind. I have my goals. They're all written down. I know what I want to do. I continuously make sure that my thought process is always a positive one. It is so easy to get into these negative attitudes and self-doubt. And I can't, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. You can't have, if you want to have success, you have to program. I know this sounds ridiculous, but you have to program your mind for positiveness and success. And if, if you don't do that, then you let the self-doubt creep in or you go, oh, I know this is going to screw up. And when you start talking like that, your brain will actually seek out exactly what you're talking about, what you want. You got you to gotta quit that. You got to tell your brain exactly what you want. And then when you go out and you work at it, you're positive about your results instead of negative. I always I tell people, and I told this to my children too, I don't believe that you can be, I, I believe personally that you cannot be successful and be liked by everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna go through life where everybody's just gonna love you uh, and you're successful. There are a lot of jealous people out there. This is another thing that will get you if you don't watch out, is that your friends will start being like, oh wow, you're, you're becoming bigger than we are. Wow, are you forgetting your friends? You're gonna fight this a lot. And being liked should be the least thing that you want if you're being if you're wanting to be successful, but you can't let that get into your brain. You can't let the negativity of other people uh, get into your brain because uh, if you do, you you just set yourself up for this reoccurring failure. And, and last year, man, I didn't, I always tried to keep positive the whole time and things absolutely worked out for me uh, fantastically because that's all I thought about was the positive. So even when people did bad things to me, I didn't get all negative and, 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 <clears throat> I, I just think it helps with your goals. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to echo and bounce off what we said, those are things that you have to learn to do. It's like you're not born with that skill set, but the less you react and the more you respond correctly, the easier it gets. It's like if you're upset or say you have an argument, you ever notice that 20 or 30 minutes later you think of the perfect thing that you should have said? That's because you calm down and you have all the yes. stress hormones out of your mm-hmm. bloodstream, Right. And now you're like, oh, I wish they could say that again so I have a perfect response. It's the same thing in life and martial arts. It's like, okay, instead of reacting negatively, how about I learn to respond correctly? And one of the the keys to that is to care less about what people think and do about you and just do more. 
Like, go with people that are better than you. If you get tapped out, good, because you're t- a little bit of time from now, you'll be the person that's <coughs> other people. And then you're, you're going to be the person that people seek out. But you have to be willing to lose some parts of yourself and your life to gain better parts of yourself and parts of your life. And um, that's that kind of- change as a person we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Change mm-hmm. as a human being. When you're developing and changing, that's when you'll succeed. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, a butterfly doesn't hate the caterpillar. You know, it's it just turned into a different thing. And um, but to go like from the wrestling too, Greg, it's like, <clears throat> and this isn't any kind of program that you have. There's a certain washout rate, right? Oh, yeah. And it's like, okay. And it's just part of it. Now, our goal is to help lower that. And if you're listening to this, we want you to be on the group that makes it, not the group that washes out. And if you look at life and you look at your goals, think to yourselves, okay, do I typically wash out of most programs and things I try, or do I typically belong to the group that makes it through the tough part? And that's something that you got to learn to do. But um, the other part of this is just a phrase I like is that you have to lead your life, not not Mm -hmm. react to it. And you have to respond to it, not just... You have to build the positivity and look for the good in the outcomes. Because what happens if you go, okay, man, I got smashed, I got beat up, I lost, I didn't do as good. You could say, well, I trained with some amazing people. They showed me where my weaknesses were. Now I know what to fix. They beat me, and now my level is coming up. And everybody has an ego, but you have to learn how to have a healthy ego. And listen, nobody likes losing. I mean, I don't know anyone that's like, I can't wait to lose. But the way that you respond to that is going to really determine whether or not you start leaning towards quitting and getting out or leaning towards toughening into becoming better. And so um, think about this, lead your life, not just react to it. And um, everybody has ups and downs, you, me, I don't know a single person that doesn't. But hopefully as you get older and we get older, we have less bad moments and they don't last quite as long. Absolutely. Yeah, we nurture the relationships around us. It's like... I've been married for a long time, man. And, uh, you know, you got to take care of the people around you. And if you don't, they're not going to be around you. And and I can't control everything that everybody does around me, but I can control what I put into the equation and you can control what you put into the equation. And um, some relationships are made to be part-time. Some are made to be long-term. It just depends. Um, Good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. But um, the way that you train yourself to come out of them, I think is going to be very telling about that. And, um, you know, I, all of us, I've been in a bad relationship too. You get out and you get in a better one, uh, hopefully. Right. But if you meet, there's a saying that if you meet a negative person during your day, okay, you met a negative person or you, but if you're, if you met 20 of them in a row, you're probably the negative person and unaware of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, we have to look at ourselves too and kind of look at what you, what do you, gravitate towards people that achieve or people that talk about what went wrong mm-hmm. and we want yeah. you to be towards the, per, the people that achieve more and and so that that's my perspective yeah i really like the uh, lead your life i mean that's something i'm gonna like just have right there in my forefront of my mind um, as a reminder i want to respond to a few things greg when you're talking about you know making that decision and how you pretty much inverted it from one year to the the next uh, is also there was some emotion attached. There was emotion with that change, right? Uh, you had one experience and it wasn't as fulfilling or where you wanted to be. So there was an emotional component when you made that change. So I think, I think it makes goals a lot stronger. I mean, we need the why, compelling why, but we need an emotional element to it that fuels it. So I think if we can add that to anything we want to achieve, we uh, increase our, our likelihood. Also, um, Keith, when you were talking about program your mind for success, man, I'm a firm, firm believer in that. I'm sure we all are. You know, I'm sure we're all the kind of people that have a daily, some kind of daily thing going into our mind, feeding our mind and carrying us forward. And, you know, I think it's vital. I think people that say you can do that every once in a while, but you don't need it. You don't need to condition yourself on a daily basis. That's just like brushing your teeth one time. I mean, it's just not going to go very far. So it's got to be a daily practice, in my opinion. And then... I want to speak to you. You guys were talking about how, how big culture was with that that mm-hmm. example of, say, the new student who just wasn't maybe getting the need for strong goals. The culture, sometimes those around you will have you going through it or, or, or lead you through it because that's the expectation. So even if you don't feel like it, you'll go ahead and just go with it. But then on the flip side of that, 
with the encouragement and everything, sometimes people don't even know when they achieve their goals. I mean, obviously, you'd know if you got a new belt or maybe even a, a stripe or something. But if you were just getting better and you weren't sure, you have that culture of the people around you that, like Mark, you said, they say, you know, I've seen you get so much better in this area. You're, you're a totally different person in this area. So I think that's really important to, um, to acknowledge. Yeah, it's um, just real quick, you know, to tell and this is something I strongly believe in because too many people don't tell the people around them. Thank you for helping. Thank you for calling me out. Thank you for being better um, and looking up for people. Like I remember when I first started, I remember I, I think the first time I ever spoke to you, Keith, I was like, I can't believe Keith Owen called me and we had a conversation and you too, Greg, the same thing we talked. I was like, man, I'm just a, like, I think I was a brown belt. It was in Brazil. I was like, man, like the Greg Nelson is sitting here having a conversation with me. And, um, you know, I see a lot of similar traits among people that I really look up to and respect. And a lot of them is just you're willing to be honest with yourself more than anybody else, that mo more than many people. And um, you don't make excuses for things. You just this is what happened and this is what's going to happen. And, you know, so thank you for that. And, you know, I sit here and listen to you guys and I'm picking up on things, too. And it's like you have to put yourself around people that you look up to that you can learn from at all times. Um, you, me, and everyone listening to this included. So try to find people. And I guess it goes back to what you said earlier, Greg, is you got to find someone that has a similar interest and background in order to relate to them. But um, everybody, it doesn't matter if you're a coach, you need someone to raise your level of um, performance up to mentally, emotionally, with everything in your life. So seek that person out for sure and, and build a good relationship with them. Yeah, I think uh, going back to that too is is also – Sometimes I knew I, I did this for myself. I kind of decided, hey, I'm going to expand and kind of get out of my comfort zone. And, yeah. you know, I've been doing martial arts for as long as I can remember. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something totally out of my comfort zone. So I ended up going to a – at first I went to a Brendan Burchard conference, a motivational guy, a product mm -hmm. guy. And I was surrounded by people – from all areas of life but i but i went in there and i just looked at it oh, i'm just going in there just like a white belt like i know nothing because really i i had no idea what was going to go on so i went in there and the process of you know learning new things and not having and not really worrying about what others were thinking right mm -hmm. i didn't care it was just like being on the mat if i get tapped out by this guy nobody else worries about it because they're busy getting tapped out themselves so I was like, oh, I'm just going to do my own thing over here. I'm just going to grow. But then I go, well, I'm going to go to another one. So then I went to another guy, Bo Eason, who was a professional football player who became a, a stage actor. And now he's one of the top speaking coaches and movement. And, and so I worked with him. And it was just getting outside of my comfort zone and becoming a beginner again at something totally new. And if I would have went to a, sem a martial arts seminar, I would have been like, oh, this is what I do. So I really wanted to kind of, shake up my own life and start to expand and, and grow in a different area. So I became a beginner again. I went to somewhere that's going to force me to be out of my comfort zone. And that uh, when I came back, it kind of realigned my mind too. Hey, this is what these guys are going through. My students are going through. These other people are going through. They're beginners. And I was just in that, in that forced myself to go back to that, that stage again. And that it really helped me out a lot, I believe. And, and just to trailer that real quick, I'm listening to this, and what I what you're saying is you have to change yourself as a person. Yeah. You have to grow. You have to stretch yourself. And if you're not ready to change yourself as a person and grow into that, how can you take on more responsibility and, and have more things and run more things if you're not the type of person – in the, that leader, I, I guess we talk in leadership, you know, goals and leadership, they kind of are together. I mean, you got to become that person. And if you're not that person, you will, that's why you'll see failure because you're, you didn't grow. And, and, and so if you're not growing, if you're like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know about goals and all that. I don't want to grow. It's okay. You won't grow, but then don't be, don't be unhappy that you didn't achieve what you wanted to achieve because it's all about you. And again, that's what I was saying about Controlling your mind, man. Controlling your thinking every single day. Uh, staying on track. Don't don't get off track. Be yeah. the person that that 
that is th that I 365 days I look at my goals and I'm trying to work towards them. Let me just add one more thing, and th this was a big thing for me in the whole goal thing. When I, I would achieve goals, and I wouldn't celebrate them. You know, I wouldn't have any celebration over it. I would just achieve it, go mark it off, mark it. Off. And you know, then achieving the goals kind of didn't give me any satisfaction because I would achieve them, but yet there was no celebration. And I think personally, anytime you achieve a goal or anytime you work towards a goal, you should have a little celebration thrown in there. Yes. Whether that's go out to dinner, whether that's, you know, sit there and go, yes, you know, or yell really loud or something like that, because that's what your mind needs. Your mind needs a success. And when we seek success, you might as well throw yourself a success party every <laughs> single time. And when you do that, it'll it'll help you to carry on. Uh, where I had to learn a lesson about, wow, I've, I'm achieving all these goals and I'm not very happy. Nah, need to celebrate a little bit more. And 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 I found that that made me uh, want to achieve more goals. Keith, I think that is so 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 important. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, as as high achievers, a lot of us get into this psychology of striving. You know, what's the next thing? How far mm -hmm. can I go? But we don't take time, uh, you know, too often we don't take time to just really celebrate where we've gotten. So thank you for, uh, for saying that. Well, I'd say that, that really remind me, one of the things that Jim Rohn always said about having goals and having a checklist is that you get to check them off. <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah. And if they don't have dates, they're not goals, they're hopes, yep. right? Exactly. So, um, and when you check them off, throw yourself a little party. Right. Absolutely. When you get your belt, when you get your next belt, throw yourself a party, go out to dinner, celebrate, have a good time. You deserve it. You will yeah. be happy. It, it's, you know, it's okay to have fun and, and yeah, and celebrate. That's right. You know, on the, on the flip side, you don't have to achieve every goal that you set out to, to be a winner. I mean, if you're doing high enough goals, sometimes you might fall short on that and that's okay. Drive forward, right? Yeah. For me, I think a big part of it is when you set a goal, a lot of it, it's just like uh, your guru Dan always talks about. Hey, it's about the process. It's about yes. the process. It's about yes. the journey, not the destination. Yeah, we have a destination. This is where we want to get. Because if you didn't have that, you would you'd be scattered all over the place. But just the fact that you're checking off step by step, mm -hmm. and moving forward, and getting closer and closer. And as the, the other analogy is, when you're when you're in the plane, right? The plane is doing what constantly readjusting its own GPS. Mm -hmm. It's never on course. It's always getting a little bit off course and then yeah. readjust, off course, readjust. And so by having those really lofty goals, those big goals, all right, those are something that, okay, this is something that's way out there and you have to step by step readjust your your day sometimes. You know, sometimes you're, you're going to, you know what, I'm going to have to put, put this off a little bit, but it's still out there because I have this other thing that's right here. But there's always these big, giant, lofty goals. But I think it's important to have those really simple step-by-step -step goals that you can get to pretty easy. Because yeah. that becomes then a mindset, and that becomes a routine. Oh, that's my goal for today. I'm going to check that off. If I can do that today, what's my weekly goal? What's my monthly goal? And we do, that, we do a lot of that with our, with our high school kids because they don't get taught how to do any of that stuff in school. All right? How to have a growth mindset how to be positive and have positive affirmations, how to deal with negative thoughts, how to create, you know, pre-match routines, how to develop themselves to deal with those negative thoughts. So, you know, sometimes it's just having those little, little teeny goals that you made and say, hey, you did that, you can do this, this next one and this next mm -hmm. one. And uh, I think that's a huge thing. And then I think it's very important what Keith said, when you do achieve that, that even that little goal, hey, Give yourself a pat on the back and have a little bit of celebration because you did something that a yeah. lot of people have no clue about. Yeah, I think if you don't mind, I'd like to just add too. I see people, and this goes back to what you just said and Keith said too, is too many people feel bad for being successful and celebrating. It's like you can't take praise almost. You can't, you have to learn to take some praise and say it and be okay with someone say, man, you did a good job. I'm proud of you. You accomplished. I see people, oh, no, coach. No, listen, you did great. You deserve it. Maybe the, the match didn't go your way. Did you give it all? I mean, is there anything that you think of you could have done better? No. Well, then what else could we ask from you? You know, um, but there's a saying I like too, and if someone's listening, you want to write it down, is if you're not growing, you're rotting. 
And mm -hmm. so that you have to feed the constant growth in your mind, in your skill set. Your mindset and your skill set are equally as important. And you have to build both of those. And if you leave one behind, you're going to be imbalanced. And you'll hear a lot about the self-care and the balance because in order to make everything better around you, we got to have a good you. We got to have a great you. Um, and, you know, failure with no change multiplies failure, right? Success will always lead to more success as long as you change and adapt on the way. And you don't, you need the lofty goals, but you got to get to the small ones first. It's like, well, you know, if you go up the stairs or you use the highway as an example, the, the GPS with the constant correction, man, all stairs lead to the end of the staircase. You got to have some end goal in mind. But the most important thing is to just show up, put in genuine effort, be coachable, be mentally and behaviorally flexible enough to start making changes because you're going to learn a lot of things about yourself in the process where you're like, man, I feel pretty good about myself. And then you're going to learn some things you're like, I'm not too happy about that, about myself. And so, um, but the goal is to minimize that through change, right? So you, you've got to learn to change yourself and your behavior. And you may actually lose some friends and social circles over it. Um, and it may be meant to be that way, but it would be great if everybody could rise up with you. But the reality in life is some people don't, and you have to be okay with that too. But you should be trying to bring everybody up with you. And if they don't want to, that's on them. It's not because you forced it. So, um, but success multiplies success. And if you're not growing, you're rotting and you got to grow. So I just wanted to add that in there because. Uh, Let me trailer that if I could real quick. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Some goals, and I want to, this, I think this is important to say to you because we write our goals down, we're focused on them, things are going good. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to share your goals with people and go, hey, look at me. This is what I'm doing. I want to urge you to really watch out as to who you share your goals with. Because, uh, you know, you're, you might want to put it on Facebook. My goal is this and this and this. And, you know, if someone's in direct competition with you for something and you walk up to them and go, hey, I'm going to do this and it's going to go against what they want, you, you can't expect them to be supportive of what you want to do. Ultimately, your goals are your own. And you just got to watch out on, on who you talk to them about, because if you tell the wrong person, in fact, they're not going to support it. They're, they might even actively try to resist you getting your goals. Um, I don't know. Uh, as an example, <clears throat> since we're all Pedro Sauer guys and I'm making this up right now, I go, my goal is to be and this is a crappy goal to begin with because it's non specific. But if my goal were I want to be Pedro Sauer's favorite black belt. Well, you know what? We're all Pedro Sauer black belts in here. And it's like, almost <laughs> these guys wouldn't give a crap. <laughs> they go, that's fine, dude, whatever you want to do. But there are people who would actively say, hey, you know, I, I want to be Pedro Sauer's best black belt in jujitsu or whatever. A crappy goal because it's not specific. But if I said that, they probably wouldn't be that simple. Yeah, you know, you can be the best and we'll, and who, who knows what the hell the best is. I mean, that's that we can get into that. No one knows what the best is. I mean, that's up for debate. But if someone else has a uh, a stake in it and you're sharing these goals with them, well, don't be, don't, you know, expect that you're going to have some hostility. So it's good to keep your goals to yourself or only to the closest people that you have, a spouse, a friend. Uh, yeah. I don't talk to many people about my goals. It's, it's nobody's business except my own. But uh, I just don't need the flack that could come with that as well. Because, again, there are people that are going to hate you just for the very fact that yeah. you're trying to create greatness for yourself. Yeah, that's true. I mean, to get in line, get get in line with all the other haters while while you wait for us to care. You've got to learn not to care about that, um, or it's gonna. And everybody drop. knows. Everybody knows that Greg is Pedro Sauer's favorite black belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you just know that. And how? That's okay. The first one, his first black belt, I believe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Quite an honor. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I think that you know. There are certain goals that you're definitely going to have that are going to be real personal. Yeah. Yes. Right? Real and personal. You, and you keep them <laughs> to yourself, right? And then, you know, as, as a school owner, we have our our instructor goals. So all the instructors are going to, you know, we're going to talk amongst ourselves because we're on the same we're on the same plane. We know where we want to go, right? So we we can open up on that on that level of things. But I'll. I always stress to those guys, hey, you got to have your own goals. You got to have that goal that, you know, that nobody has to know about. 
Yeah. Nobody has to know about it. It's your goal. And then we have our our community goals as as a, as a school, as a as a team. You know? And uh, we I do the same thing. We do the same thing with our high school wrestlers. We have a team goal. What's our team goal? Well, we want to win this heat. We want to win this tournament, whatever. Now, as an individual, what's your individual goal? And I don't know what that is. Is it to get new takedowns? Is it not to get pinned? Right? Because I don't know what level you're at. Right? It's just making it through the practice without without wanting to quit. You know, so you have to come up with these goals that are really personal to yourself that you hold tight and you have to, you know, you have to find ways to figure figure it out. And I think that's a big part of it too, is having that there's a there's a part of really developing where you're figuring it out yourself. And you don't always have somebody telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I tell you this, this was something that I found Many, many, many years ago when I was doing, uh, when I was training with Rick Fay and we were doing the Collie and the Jun Fon and, and, and Thai Box and everything else. And so we had to learn from a seminar or actually going out to California because there weren't even DVDs or VHS tapes yet. All right. It was like you had to learn from a seminar and then we brought it back and we just started just taking it apart, dissecting, analyzing, making things up trying to figure out different ways to train. And then a few months later, we'd figure it in again. And we say, look at what we did. And he goes, well, that's awesome. Now watch these 25 counters. And we're just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we'd bring it back. And I went out to LA and they were, and a lot of the students there were so used to being under Guru Dan that, I'm go- that they were like, where did you learn all this stuff? And I go, what are you talking about? I made up half this crap on our own just by figuring <laughs> it out. You know, and uh, and I think that's a huge part of it, it having that personal drive that, that that you're willing to that you're willing to find and work it out yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. So true. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. True. I just want to say with this subject as as the last one, guys, I know we could literally talk about this for the next yeah. three or four hours. But uh, as we're bringing it uh, somewhat to a close, uh, what other thoughts do you have on goals setting them starting them being consistent follow through or any anything else you want to add uh, on this subject no big part of it i think is just having fun give yourself the ability to have fun doing what you love love what you do and do what you love and do it like you love it right because you know it, it is it's, you know for us we get to do what we love and 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 i look at it like this too and it was already alluded to a little bit about the, hey, you're going to get executed in a, in a month if you don't figure it out. But everybody should have somewhat of a mortality motivation. Yeah. You know? Because, hey, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. So I true. was 37 years old and I got cancer. So I had to figure out how to do everything all over again. And mm-hmm. and I tell people, I go, hey, you got to love every day. And be the best that you can to be as healthy as you can to have as much energy as you can mm. and that will make everything easier well said uh so i'll just jump in but i think you know when you listen to this and hopefully people will play it over and take the little nuggets out of it but um just to kind of reemphasize, you just got to show up and just care less and cut yourself some slack and it's okay not to be perfect at the first time you try anything but just keep showing up even when you don't want to because everyone i've ever met is always grateful after they show up it's just the difficulty of getting there so keep showing up care less do more and tell the right circle of people and get the right circle of people to help you at all different levels those circles may be different but uh, that's it. And just, you know, thanks for having me on the podcast with you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure we'll see each other in the future. Definitely. Okay. Well, I, I'm no motivational speaker and I don't I don't claim to be. Uh, if if you don't want to do anything with your life and you don't want to achieve your goals, I think that's perfectly all right, because we need people in society to do the mundane things uh, and hate their job and go to it and just get it done to support people like me who are attaining their goals. And I know I, boy, I'm a great, this is a great way to wreck things right at the end. But if you don't, if you don't want to change your life, 
heck, man, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to worry me whatsoever because we're all responsible for my life. You guys didn't get up this morning and go, I wonder if Keith Owens is attaining his goals today. You know, you, everybody's worried about themselves and you, you choose the path that you're on. And if your path has no goals in it and don't want to achieve anything and just want to exist from day to day, God bless you for it because uh, I only want to deal with people that want to succeed, and that's who I'm into, all right? And and it's not bad. It's not good. It's just the way life is. Over the centuries and the millennia, there have been people who never achieved anything. But if you want to achieve something, it's all going to start with the goals, starting to work with them, make them habits, make them routines. Uh, and I just want to leave you with this. If you do want to change your life, it doesn't matter how much money I have. It doesn't matter how much money anybody else has. We have the same 24-hour period as everybody else. All the rich people have 24 hours. So do we. It's what you achieve in that time period that's going to define you as a human being. So if you're constantly achieving and moving and going in that direction, you will have success. And if you want to sit still, more power to you. Uh, but just don't complain when it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to because you just made a wish and didn't want to put the work in. Very well said. Very well said. I'm Great so stuff, motivational. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you said people don't wake up and, and wonder if, uh, if Keith Owen has, has achieved his goals today. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and just wonder yes, how you're doing you. with this. <laughs> one, one person. Fantastic. Right, right. <laughs> Well, guys, listen, I really appreciate it. As always, this, uh, this is going to be a, an episode I'm sure people will want to um, listen to more than once to get all the gems. And uh, thank you for the impact that each of you are having on so many. I appreciate your time, your knowledge, and your insights. And I hope 2020 will be the best year ever for all you guys. Yeah, it's going to be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All Take right. care. Be now. well, gentlemen. Thank Adios. You. All right. Really enjoyed that discussion. What a great, great group of guys to have any discussion with. So really appreciate the opportunity, as always, to uh, sit down and converse with them. We'll certainly have them on again in the future for another topic and discussion. Up now is the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Now is the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Today I'm going to share something called Believe and Achieve. Whatever your mind can conceive and believe, it will achieve. Dream great dreams and make them come true. Do it now. You are unique. In all the history of the world, there was never anyone exactly like you. And in all the infinity to come, there will never be another you. Never affirm self-limitations. What you believe yourself to be, you are. To accomplish great things, you must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. If you've built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. Put foundations under them. Yes, you can. Believing is magic. You can always better your best. You don't know what you can do until you try. Nothing will come of nothing. If you don't go out on a limb, you're never going to get the fruit. There is no failure except no longer trying. Hazy goals produce hazy results. Clearly define your goals. Write them down. Make a plan for achieving them. Set a deadline. Visualize the results and go after them. Just don't look back unless you want to go that way. Defeat may test you. It need not stop you. If at first you don't succeed, try another way. For every obstacle, there is a solution. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. The greatest mistake is giving up. Wishing will not bring success, but planning, persistence, and a burning desire will. There is a gold mine within you from which you can extract all the necessary ingredients. Success is an attitude. Get yours right. It's astonishing 
how short a time it takes for very wonderful things to happen. Now, go make it happen. And that's going to do it for this edition of the show. As always, I thank you for listening. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you feel like you're benefiting from the show and want to show your support, you can support us on our Patreon page and the link in the show notes. Please like and follow us on social media and help us spread the word by reposting our posts and telling others about the show. You can leave comments on the website at www.racyjujitsurocks.com. You can also go to iTunes and leave comments as well as rate the show. And we would appreciate a five-star rating, which helps us with our standing in iTunes. You can also leave comments on our YouTube channel. If you have suggestions for the show, please don't hesitate to give those. We always like feedback and suggestions. Okay, that's going to do it. So until next time, this is Marty Josie, and I'll see you on the mat.